recent months, Colombia has taken great strides towards ending ongoing violence with rebels. But could a peace agreement in Cuba actually put an end to five decades of conflict in Colombia? The nation is divided. After all, there are still a lot of open wounds in Colombia. And the opposition, led by former President Álvaro Uribe, feels the government has been too accommodating, offering political inclusion and amnesty to hardened terrorists. I spoke with leading opposition senator Ivan Duque. I, I disagree with the idea that Colombia has a civil war. Colombia has been suffering a terrorist threat for many years. The, the number of FARC effectives throughout the country is less than 10,000 in a country of 44 million people. So this is not a civil war. This is not brother against brother. What we have is a criminal organization that has been producing damage to all the civil said civilians in the country against the military forces, and they have turned themselves into a narco-trafficking organization. So what we really need to do in Colombia is if we have already undertaken the path of, every, of, a, of a peace negotiation, that then this has been President Santos' idea. What we want to say clearly, not only to the Colombian population, but to the rest of the world, is that any peace process has to be sustainable and credible. And the only way that we can have a sustainable and credible peace process is based on four red lines that ought to be protected in favor of the Colombian people. The first one is that people that have committed crimes against humanity need to have imprisonment sentences. It's a must. Obviously, due to the fact and due to the need maybe of reaching an agreement, you can have a reduction, a sustainable reduction in the sentence, but still you need to have imprisonment sentence. The second thing, people that have committed crimes against humanity in those organizations cannot be allowed to run for office. Congressional office, state uh, legis legislatures require that people that can be elected have the highest moral standards. So people that have been producing kidnappings, selective homicides, genocides, raping, uh, child abuse cannot have the, the road granted for them to participate in political space to run for office. It can be accepted that people that have sympathy, that have uh, committed political crimes, and they, after demobilize, present themselves to run for office, we don't have a problem with that. But people that have committed crimes against humanity ought to be banned to run for office. And I think the fourth important element is that we need to get the, the money that FARC has accumulated throughout their narco-trafficking activities and be used for victim reparation. It would be absurd that the Colombian government had to bail out their criminal activities and give only by the state any sort of reparation to the victims. And are you concerned by the way uh, the Santos administration has been pursuing the peace process to this point? Well, I think I, I, I have something that I, that I criticize, I like some points that I criticize from, 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 from his negotiation stand. What, ha what FARC has been saying to the Colombian people is they don't want to have any imprisonment sentence. They want to have full political participation. They don't want to give any money from their own to victim reparation. And they are saying they're, ne they're, they're not willing to turn their weapons to the Colombian state. They use some, some uh, flattered words uh, with the idea of you know, keeping them, leaving them, but not turning those weapons back to the Colombian administration, the Colombian government. And in the other hand, what the Colombian people have expressed they want out of the peace process, they want imprisonment for criminals against humanity, they don't want political participation from people that have been already investigated and punished for crimes against humanity. They have said that they want FARC to reparate their victims, and they want also FARC to give the weapons to the Colombian authorities. So if you have those two uh, antagonizing uh, forces, 
one that is legitimate that is the Colombian people and one that is illegitimate that is a terrorist organization. Your question would be, when and what's the government stand? Where is the, the government uh, uh, going to define the red lines? And I think what I criticize from the government is that they have never expressed what are the red lines and what is the type of freeze they are willing to accept. So in, in my criteria, I think the Colombian government ought to show the Colombian people that they are more inclined to support their position than to fall in the hands of the FARC request to the government. And, and I criticize that the government has put all their political bets on a successful negotiation. When you're dealing with terrorists of this magnitude, you always have to contemplate a failure as an option. Because in, in the sake of an agreement, you cannot whitewash the criminal history of our, of our organization like FARC. Now, the narrative that has been put forth from the Santos camp is that uh, the FARC was severely weakened under the Uribe administration and that now is the time to negotiate a peace because they are so weak that they have to negotiate on the terms of the Colombian government and the Colombian people. Uh, would you challenge that narrative? I think during President Uribe's administration, we had the most important military and legal success fighting criminality. Not only FARC, but the paramilitaries and narco traffic. In the case of FARC, I think they, they were severely weakened. And I'm pretty sure that if President Santos would have continued the democratic security policy once his administration started, maybe he would have had a better negotiation position. Because the, 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 the damage that the peace process has, has made is that FARC has recovered political legitimacy internationally. FARC has become an organization that puts issue on the political and social debate agenda. And FARC has been using the delay of time and the delay based on their request to the government as a way to gain political strength. So I believe that the model of negotiation that we had had, where the government never said clearly that the base for a negotiation is for FARC to cut from scratch, cut all their criminal activities, has allowed them to have a peace speech in La Habana, Cuba, and have war signals and war facts in Colombia. Senator, thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much, Sam. It's really a pleasure. Absolutely. Thank you so much.